FBI informant. William Campbell spent six years undercover. He gathered evidence about Russian efforts to corner the American uranium market with the help of Hillary Clinton. But he wasn't allowed to talk about it until late last month when President Trump ordered the Justice Department to lift a gag order against him. Here to talk about what Campbell, her client, could tell us before he does go before Congress and when that testimony might occur Campbell's attorney, Victoria Tansing of the Genova and Tansing. Victoria previously worked in the Reagan Justice Department and is one of the great Americans. Good to see you. Oh, good to be here, Lou. Let's start with the frustrating uh, uh, delay, if I may put it that way, uh, that uh, Congress is, uh, is experiencing, uh, that we all who are following this, this very important case and, and story why has there been such a delay? The Justice Department, at the president's order, lifted the gag order, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Why, well, is he, why is he not talking uh, to Congress? Well, because he has to talk to me first, Lou. <laughs> Look, <laughs> preparing a major witness under ordinary circumstances is just a, a Herculean task for, for a lawyer. You know, I have to go from not knowing anything about the case, which is where I was in September, to knowing everything about the case. And as you said, six years, 5,000, over 5,000 documents, that's a lot to digest. And then you have to get the witness so that the, the facts are organized in his mind so that he can efficiently answer questions. But in this case, we have an extra uh, challenge, and that is that Mr. Campbell was diagnosed in um, October of 2016 with leukemia. But this was his second cancer diagnosis in seven years, and he truly thought, Lou, that he was going to die. And the reason he reached out to provide this information is he said he did not want to go to his grave knowing this story and not having it, having it told. The, you know, and we all hope, uh, irrespective of the circumstances on Capitol Hill, that, you know, that uh, Mr. Campbell has a, a, a speedy, successful recovery uh, in, in that disease. Uh, where, what is a realistic time to imagine that he would be able to uh, speak to Congress directly and personally? Well, let me tell you where we are. Um, he, fortunately, he was through with his chemotherapy treatment uh, several weeks ago, and he's now on chemotherapy pills, which are still debilitating and, and make him so that he's not able to work for long hours. But he did get his doctor's permission to come to Washington a week ago, and I worked with him for several days, and we went over documents, and I'm now just about ready to put the finishing touches on a 10-page overview of the, a statement for him so that I can give it to Chairman Grassley, and they can get an idea of what to question him about. Because, you know, they, you can't go in and pick in the Pope. They don't even know where to start asking questions. So I have to provide them something that's detailed enough that they know how to ask questions. Devin Nunez, uh, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, obviously frustrated immensely with the Department of Justice uh, uh, and the FBI uh, on a host of issues. Uh, and this is a Republican administration with a Republican Justice Department and new leadership in the <laughs> FBI. And I have the feeling this is the same group of people who were there for eight years under President Obama. Am I, am <laughs> no, I misreading the situation? It's been amazing to me. I, 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 it's, this, it's my old home. I thought I understood right. it, and I thought under President Obama, okay, well, I know who's leading it. But uh, some of the stonewalling here has been quite perplexing to me. Uh, and, and they haven't gotten out their message as to why some of, the, some of it's going on. I just don't know. Uh, we do know one thing. It, it's not helpful. It is also not respectful of the, the, the American public's right to know. Uh, it is also important that to the degree we, we all want to know what's going on. You have looked at the material. You've talked with Mr. Campbell. Give us a sense of how, in your judgment, how important what he has to say, how important those documents are uh, to put before the Congress and what you expect uh, in terms of impact. Lou, there were two things going on, and that was that the, the, the Russians, the Putin wanted to just gain global control of the uranium mm -hmm. industry. Mr. Campbell provided documents and memos and all kinds of information to the FBI counterintelligence about that. 
The other one, what thing going on was how corrupt the Russian nuclear energy industry was. I mean, these 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 companies are all related. They might have different different right. names, but you know, they all report up the ladder to Putin, every one of them. And so, knowing these two things, that the companies were corrupt, and that Putin wanted to corner the mar market on uranium. Mm -hmm. Our government in 2010, that's knowing this for over a year, right. decided that it would be a good idea to sell to this corrupt Russian company, a company that had 20% of our uranium. It just boggles the mind. It boggles the mind, uh, but it also uh, makes it appear very clearly, uh, as I've researched this case, looked at the, what Cepheus did and, and, and the various agencies that make it up and departments, uh, there was, it was, uh, I guess the only way to say it is it, they had an easy pass to the result that obviously the President of the United States wanted or the Secretary of State or Vladimir Putin. If there is a clear case of collusion between the Russians <laughs> And the U.S. government, yeah. it is that case, in my opinion. Oh, well, but, but remember, Lou, this was 2009, 2010. Right. And where were we? We were in reset. And we were with President Obama, who right. thought that if he was just really nice to people, they'd really be nice to him back. And he was going to change the world. You know, Putin was going to be his puppet. Yeah. Didn't quite work out that way. Uh, not, much, not much of his uh, at least uh, expressed uh, uh, opinions about foreign policy did work out, did they? Victoria, no. it's great to have you with us. We thank you. Thank you. Uh, we hope that Mr. Campbell uh, is uh, on his way to a uh, successful and... Uh, we do and uh, say your prayers for him. Uh, absolutely. And we uh, look forward to his appearance. Thank you and yours. Accused Benghazi ringleader Ahmed Abu Khattalib basically convicted on terrorism charges, but the jury acquitting the Libyan terror leader of four charges, including finding him not guilty of murder. The mixed verdict came as a disappointment for family members of those killed who are seeking accountability. Mother of U.S. Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith, who was murdered during the Benghazi attack. Patricia Smith is here with her reaction. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us. Again, we are so sorry for your loss. This is a disgrace. What was thank your reaction you. when you heard the verdict? I think it's disgusting. The man, the man was one of the men that killed my son. What's wrong with putting him to death or, or saying that he did it? You know, he, you know, the other complaint was is that he got constitutional due process rights, uh, even though he killed, uh, he's a terrorist who killed our men overseas. What's your reaction to that? Who gave him due process? Why does he deserve due process? He's a terrorist. You're still, I, yeah, go ahead. I don't understand how these things are happening. The man killed several people. Obviously, he killed several people. And I've been told that he's not part of the conspiracy or some such thing because they couldn't see him on his cameras and they couldn't identify him. Well, if they can't identify him, why did they arrest him? So do you feel like you've gotten any justice whatsoever? Absolutely none. What do you want to happen next? I want Hillary to go to jail. Has she called you? Have you spoken with her she since? She has no, no. The last thing that she said to me was on TV calling me a liar. And what happened after that? She hasn't talked to me. I, I've been begging her, please tell me what happened. I don't know officially what happened. Nobody has ever told me. All they would tell me is that I do not deserve to know because I am not a member of the immediate family. You know what's striking here, Patricia, is as you remember, Susan Smith went on, uh, excuse me, Susan Rice went on yes. the talk shows to say after she was advised by political, uh, you know, um, officials uh, yes. in, in the State Department or in the Obama administration to basically say, you know, this was blamed on that video. But now yes. this clearly shows it was terrorism. What were your thoughts there? Well, they said that it was a, Hillary told me it was the fault of the video. Obama put his arms around me and told me it was the fault of the video. Uh, Panetta told me the same thing. Susan Rice told me the same thing. Who do I believe if I can't believe my government who knew what the answer was and didn't tell me and wouldn't let me know?
Patricia. I don't understand. I, we hear you loud and clear. And again, we're so sorry for your loss, and we'd love to have you back on to discuss no, this further. No, do something about it. Just, just, just uh, uh, let's have a hearing on this thing. I want to. I want to talk to Hillary. I want her to tell me what happened. Okay. I don't want it to be put under the rug. Patricia, thanks again. Thanks so much for coming on. We are learning additional details tonight from a man who says the Obama administration knew about classified emails from Hillary Clinton and actually tried to hinder the investigation. He first spoke exclusively to Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge, and tonight she has the new details. With more than two decades of government service, the Obama administration nominated Charles McCullough Inspector General for the 17 intelligence agencies. If you don't have your independence, you have nothing. Few people know more about the classified Clinton emails and the fallout. All of a sudden, people started talking about how independent I was and how wonderful that I was independent. That independence was tested in 2015 after the intelligence agencies found their classified information in the Clinton emails. As word spread, McCullough went to senior officials, including Director of National Intelligence James Clapper. He said this is extremely reckless. And he mentioned something about uh, the campaign would have, uh, will have heartburn. Did you tell the CIA director, John Brennan, that there was classified information? Oh, he already knew. It wasn't me who told him uh, what was happening. He'd already been well briefed on it. After two emails sent by Clinton aides that contained classified information kick-started the FBI probe, government records show a senior State Department official who worked for Secretary Clinton allegedly pressed the FBI to downgrade the classification as part of a quid pro quo. Is that how the government's supposed to operate? No, uh, that's, uh, classification is not negotiable. By February 2016, campaign emails released via WikiLeaks suggest Clinton's lawyer and a senior congressional staffer shared information to target McCullough. But I think there was certainly a coordinated strategy. Uh, that I, I, in fact, I, I not only think it, I, I think it uh, very, very much so. A former Clinton campaign spokesman did not return Fox's calls, but in a tweet did not dispute the claims and tried to cast doubt on McCullough's credibility. Fox News also asked about this March 2016 letter from seven senior Democrats, including Senator Dianne Feinstein. It said they had serious concerns about the Clinton email review. Feinstein's office wanted McCullough to respond. The incident turned into a standoff six weeks before the election. And I flat out told the staff director I was not going to respond to it. I said, tell her I'll resign tonight. Senator Feinstein's office did not respond to Fox's questions about McCullough and whether there was a coordinated effort to undermine his office. On Capitol Hill this week, Senator Feinstein told the Daily Caller website she had no idea what McCullough was talking about, Brett. Captain, thank you. You're welcome. Real news, real reports, real things happening around the world right now.